Hi, welcome to the My Life in Data uh, video demonstration. So, data visualization has been a growing field over the last few years. Uh, there's been a proliferation of infographics all across the internet, from news organizations to entertainment websites. Within this growing interest in data, there's been a steady growing trend of personal data collection. So people have been using a variety of websites, apps, hardware devices to track their movements, uh, exercise routines, spending habits, uh, weight gain, weight loss, etc. So what My Life in Data does is it takes three years of data and brings them into ClickView. So data points of driving distances, coffees drank, miles ran, hours slept, etc. were recorded on a daily basis. Through ClickView, a user can begin to look for trends, filter by time periods, and possibly adjust behavior based on personal goals. So just another quick note about the data. The data was actually recorded in Google Spreadsheets, and the nice thing was that I was able to access them um, virtually anytime, anywhere, because I could access it either on a desktop computer or on my mobile phone. So if we get started, we'll see that the navigation is down the left-hand side, uh, and you can filter by time, which runs across the top. So the first sheet is all about the amount of hours I spent a week. And was I at work? Uh, was I commuting? Was it just general free time? If we come into a section like this, we could see, with a bit more clarity, once you start to zoom in on the data, you could see individual days a little bit better than you could a second ago. And also we can come in here and say, well, this bar actually is about the tallest. And we could tell, well, I was awake for 21.98 hours. And I know that was actually, just looking at the rest of the app, I know that was actually the most amount of time I spent awake in three years. Um, we can also tell that part of that time was spent at work, so I know this was a weekday. If we come over to clear selections and we come over to driving, so driving we could say across three years I know I drove 45,413.78 miles, which seems like a pretty good sized number until you put it in the context of something else. So in this case, uh, that number I put it in the context of the average distance between the Earth and the Moon. So 45,413 is only, it's not even 20% of the distance between the Earth and the Moon. So it kind of helps make the number a bit more relevant if it ties into something that people can kind of wrap their minds around. Uh, also of interest here in this bar chart at the bottom, kind of similar to the Rise and Shine tab, it, you could tell these tall bars is when, or when I drove a lot. And I know that's driving to the shore, it's driving to Boston. And these bigger gaps, if we zoom in over here, these bigger gaps, I know it's a two-week periods uh, where I spent abroad and I didn't have a car. So under running, I could tell you that over three years I ran 985.15 miles, which is similar to the driving tab. Okay, that it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around a number like that until we say, well, it's 39.1% of the distance between Philadelphia and San Francisco. Uh, also recorded here is a bar chart that overlays all three years, and as you scroll down the page, you get three rows highlighting different data points about each year's running. In 2009, you could see that uh, when I was just starting out to try to you know, get into running, you could see that as the temperature range would increase, so would the amount of miles I rode. So it's a very fair weather sort of uh, behavior. But in 2010, 2011, it didn't really seem to correlate. At that point, I was more determined to run, what, you know, no matter what the temperature was. The assorted tab is kind of the junk drawer, and it contains just a variety of different things. Um, if you want to see the number of movies, you can see it here in a bar chart. But if you click in with this icon, you can see exactly what days and exactly which movies. And then clicking the icon again, back to the bar chart, it'll take you back. At the bottom, it contains different sporting events. So if I came in here, I could see an increasing trend of you know, going to more and more Phillies games. And if I pick just the Phillies, and maybe I pick just 2011, I could see that when it came to the, the good luck charm, I guess, if you will, I had the, of the games I went to, the Phillies had a 70% win percentage. But 2010, it was 79%. And while this data is interesting, and it seems to be that the Phillies are trending downward, I can't really control that. So there's not a whole lot I can do to change it. And finally, the last tab is food and drinks, which is where I've recorded uh, the number of caffeinated beverages I had, uh, just a few other various foods or drinks. And then these three rows down here, we have information about beer, information about cheesesteaks, and information about soft pretzels. And if we actually if we come up here to the beer, we could see that there was this big surge in 
surge in the number of beers I drank. And actually, if we switch over to 2010, it's a little bit easier to see. And we could tell that in September of that year, I drank 54 beers, which is more than any other period. And if we go back to running, now we could cross that with coming over here, and we could see September of 2010 also was the month that I ran the least in 2010. So potentially, there's a correlation between uh, drinking more beer and exercising less. So ultimately, I think the value in an app like this is that while this is my data, this could be your data. So the idea that you could set, you know, it doesn't have to be all the same data points, but you could start to find things that are important to you, things that are relevant to you, and you could start tracking them, you could set goals, and you could use ClickView to monitor your progress towards meeting those goals. Thanks.